beyond a reasonable doubt, you must convict him. You must convict him of these charges. For us to prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt, we have to leave you firmly convinced. I want you to remember that. You're trying to study and figure out how sure you have to be in this case. The easiest way to remember, the judge will tell you this, you must be firmly convinced of his guilt. I'm not exaggerating here, guys. That is what the evidence will show you. Um, everything I've just told you will be testified to. I submit to you, um, at the end of this case, there will be no um, doubt in your mind that he's guilty of this crime. Thank you for your patience. I want you to listen carefully to all the testimony because it is so important. It's so important to these two families. Um, it's important to Miss Benny Brown. Um, but please, if if at any point um, you start trying to analyze a certain part of this case, I urge you to just fall back on your common sense. I urge you just to use good old-fashioned logic, and common sense. And I'm convinced that in this case, you'll have more than enough evidence to convict him of the charge. Two counts of murder. One for each one of those lives that he snuffed out way too early. Five counts of attempted murder for the victims that could have been killed. And then firing this gun out of his window recklessly as I'm describing it. And then the weapons charge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Why are you right next to your sir? Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. You know, as I was listening to that uh, presentation, and the question was asked, well, why are we having a trial? And um, it occurred to me my job is to show you the other half of the story. There's a lot that was left out there. Some of it we agree on, but man, was there a lot left out. Benny and Peaches were together a long time. They had children together. They had a house together. They bought a house together. And uh, before I talk too much, I do want to tell you two things. Um, one, that you'll be able to go out to Barrel State Road, the incident location. So as you hear about people, where they were, how big is the yard, and distances, and things like that, you'll be able to go out there um, by court order and examine the scene. So you'll have that. And the other thing you need to know is that uh, the state of South Carolina has, has deemed Benny to be a mental retarded. And I want you to keep that in mind and how he processes information, okay? Benny did love peaches. A lot. <clears throat> but she would continually have affairs. In prosecutor's right, Benny did spend this day, this incident that day, drinking and being very depressed and how peaches wouldn't come back to him and how she was running around with other men. You'll hear from a police officer who interviewed Benny and said, well, tell me what happened. And remember, that's five full minutes. It's like an eternity. And we don't know exactly what happened. Um, and you're not going to hear details about exactly what happened in the car in the parking lot. Five minutes is a long, long time. And there was a confrontation, and Benny admitted to it. I went to confront her about seeing other men. And every time I would bring it up, she would yell at me, But the prosecutor used the word hateful, hateful acts, and that's what you have to prove to prove murder. And you're going to know that Benny didn't have hate in his heart when he shot Peaches. Regret, remorse, wishing she would come back and be part of the family again. Sometimes uh, we call it voluntary manslaughter. That's what we're going to ask you to convict him of. Uh, this is going to be a bad week for Benny. He stands in the shadow of the penitentiary and you're 
carnival like him. He doesn't. He never. He never once backed away from taking responsibility for what, what happened to Jesus. And he did plan to kill himself. That was his plan. So, like a lot of people who have contemplated suicide, the body wants to live, and it's. I've had it described to me, people who have tried to commit suicide, and they, they've told me, I never knew it would be that hard. I couldn't do it. And Benny, like many other people, couldn't bring himself to kill himself. He didn't try to get away with what he did. He told people about it. He was drunk. He called his family members crying, sobbing, telling them what happened. He said he's going to kill himself, and he goes home. He doesn't run away to North Carolina, doesn't run away to Georgia. He tells people what he did, and he went home, knowing that his life was essentially a progress. This is part of the story that you didn't hear just a second ago. Because this is a small town, Fountain in Barnes. Everybody's kind of related to everybody, just the cousins. So when Benny called his family, it wasn't long before Nicole's family figured out and heard about what happened. Two men, Chris and Rico, you're going to hear those names a lot. Chris and Rico got together in a family meeting, and they were like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Chris had a gun. Rico had a gun. And after this family meeting, they, they embarked on a plan of action. And the plan was they communicated to each other, let's go get them. Let's get them. Let's shoot them. Let's kill them. And they left that family meeting with their guns, got their cars, and they went to Benny's house. And as the car started pulling up, You'll hear evidence of a shot was fired kind of like in a drive-by fashion. And that shot, I don't know if it was a pot shot of the house, I don't know what their intent was, but I can tell you what it announced. The lynch mob was here. The vigilantes with their guns had arrived. And we've had hearings, and, and there's been a ton of statements taken in this case, and I can tell you what these witnesses will say, because I've heard it before. And some of this is going to come out of Rico's mouth and Chris's mouth. Tell you what they did. They got their guns, they got out of their car, it's dark. They snuck up to the window, the bedroom window at Benny's house. They crouch down in the bushes in the dark and they've got their guns and they hear Benny sobbing and crying. The Rico says, He's in there, man, he's in there. But the window's too hot. Can't shoot through that window. It's too high. They can't see in there. So they fire off some shots. Probably try to flush Benny off that part of the house. They come around to the front. And now Benny's family's arrived. And they're there to say, Ben, don't kill yourself. Ben, Ben, open the door. Don't kill yourself. Ben. But they hear the shots. So they come around the front of the house. And now you have groups converging right in front of the front door. And you will see and hear that one of Benny's family members said, hey, there's no need for that. Guns, shots, there's no need for that. And Chris Brown is there saying, we'll whoop your ass too. We're here to kill Benny or we'll kill Brown. <coughs> and Rico said it too. And Rico comes running up to Chris saying, ain't nobody gonna mess with my boy. Nobody's going to mess with my boy Chris. And I had a gun. I came running over there so I could help Chris. And as Rico's running over there, he gives a gun to Chris. He's arguing with one of ben, Benny's family members right in front of the front door, basically threatening to kill him. And Rico gives him a gun. Chris Brown's out there with a the gun. And Benny's family member, his cousin, his, his life is in danger. And that's when the door opens up. And Benny takes aim at the men who brought the guns, who brought the mob of violence, the vigilante justice that they were about to meet out. They were going to drag him out of that house and kill him or kill one of his relatives. But Ben came out and he did what anybody would do. 
he shot at the people who were threatening his family members in high school. And he got one, he got Rico in the leg. Tragically, the shot missed. And Officer Rice was shot. That's not murder. That, in the eyes of the law, is Benny acting in self defense. His house was fired upon. And he was acting in self defense. And he was clearly acting in defense of another person, his cousin. And that demands a verdict of not guilty. Not because I asked for it, but because justice demands it. You are going to comport and comply with your juror and decide this case on the law and the evidence. You have to acquit them regarding the charges on officer rights. You have to acquit them of the charges against Rico Kingsborough, the man who said, let's go get him. He went there to kill that and threatened his family member. And you're going to hear evidence that when Benny did shoot, he trained down and drew down on one spot. He didn't spray bullets or shoot indiscriminately. He was trying to shoot the bad guys. He did get one of them. He did probably save his cousin's life. He didn't shoot at any other officer or any body. If you're going to go out there and see that these officers were just way, way, way from the front of the house and they're up kind of on the hill, then he trained down and he tried to get the bad guys. He acted defensively for himself and the family. That's going to come out of Rico's mouth and Chris's mouth. They're going to talk to you about the family meeting to get the darkness and where it's at. Rico admitted it before. We wanted to put a bullet in the mouth. It's going to be a tragic week. I've represented Benny since 2011. And I know that he will have his liberty stripped for what happened to Jesus. And I will see my friend go to prison for many, many, many years. He didn't murder Jesus. He didn't murder Jeffrey Rice. And he served it to assault the other police officers. And he knows what he did. You, know, you will know what he did. And he'll be punished for it. And I'm asking you, please listen to the judge. Comply with your juror oath. Decide the case on the evidence that you will see in front of you. And again, you'll be compelled to the not guilty.